Electromagnetic radiation is a way for energy to travel through space. I explained in an earlier video on Planck's conclusions of black body radiation that electromagnetic radiation travels in particles or packets of light called quanta. These particles are also called photons and carry an energy of h nu, where h is called Planck's constant. In this lecture, let's practice using this equation to find the energy of a single photon in units of joules and the energy of a mole of photons in units of kilojoules per mole. Find the energy in joules of an infrared or IR photon with a frequency of 6.30 times 10 raised to the positive 13 inverse seconds. Also find the energy in kilojoules per mole of photons. In this problem, we're looking at IR radiation. And IR radiation, or IR photons, span a range of frequencies. And for this particular IR photon, we're looking at a frequency of 6.30 times 10 raised to the positive 13 inverse seconds. And we're looking for the energy of one photon. So we're going to use this equation, the Planck equation. Sometimes it's labeled with this subscript photon. This is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So pretty straightforward problem here. Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 raised to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And then we'll just plug in our frequency. Notice how seconds times inverse seconds, those units will cancel. And that's it. Let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator. 6.626. I'll use my exponential function, the second function, e function, second e, raised to the negative 34. We'll multiply by 6.30 times 10 raised to the positive 13. And the answer I get here, 4.1. 10 raised to the minus 20 and the unit here is going to be in joules. So that's the energy of one photon. Now notice the way it's written here energy of the photon is 4.17 times 10 raised to the minus 20 joules. We also want to report this in kilojoules per mole. As I tell my students, very rarely are we ever uh, focusing in on one photon or one molecule or one atom or one particle. Usually we deal with many photons or atoms or particles. And so we usually report those in terms of moles. So it makes sense to report this in kilojoules per mole. So let's make this conversion here. 4.17 times 10 raised to the minus 20 joules. Now, it's not written here, but this is technically joule per photon. So I'll write the unit right here, joule per photon. And we want to make the conversion so that we can see units of kilojoules per mole. So this is how you do that. We'll convert joules to kilojoules and cancel the unit of joules. Put that in the denominator. Of course, one kilojoule is a thousand joules. Notice the joules cancel. And we'll set up another ratio. And this is where it gets a little tricky. We want units of kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to put mole in the denominator. And we want to get rid of this unit, the photons, 
look at how the photons go in the numerator. And of course, this is Avogadro's number. In one mole of anything, there are 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23. And I, I ran out of space there. Sorry about that. And so notice how these cancel. And of course, at the end, we have this unit of kilojoules per mole. So let's go ahead and plug this into the calculator. 4.17 times 10 raised to the minus 20 times Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23. And I'm using the exponential feature right here, like I did earlier. That's going to give us some number. And then in the denominator, we'll divide by 1,000. When we're doing dimensional analysis here, I've got other videos on dimensional analysis, which you can check out. Uh, multiplying by 1 and dividing by 1, we can ignore these values right here. And there we go. 2.51 times 10 raised to the one kilojoules per mole. This is equivalent to 25.1 kilojoules per mole if we're getting this out of scientific notation. Find the energy in joules of an ultraviolet or UV photon with a wavelength of 2.10 times 10 raised to the minus 7 meters. Also find the energy in kilojoules per mole of photons. In this example, we're given the wavelength of these ultraviolet photons and the wavelength is 2.10 times 10 raised to the negative 7 meters and so these particular uv photons have this wavelength so we want to find the energy so e photon is equal to h nu but notice how we're given the wavelength now there's two things you can do here uh, you'll have to make a conversion we know that the speed of light is equal to lambda nu. And so you can do a couple things here. This is what I tell my students. Let's go ahead and solve for nu, uh, nu. Divide both sides by lambda. And so, of course, nu is equal to C over lambda. So you can do this conversion first and then plug in the frequency. But what I tell my students is to go ahead and just take this term right here and substitute it into the frequency term. It's the same thing. And so instead of h nu, here's another way to write this equation. We can write h c over lambda. We see this often in chemistry uh, when we do spectroscopy. Usually we're, we'll deal in terms of wavelengths. And so it's common to see this equation. So I'll go ahead and write it this way. So we'll have the constants on top, the numerator, Planck's constant. Times the speed of light. And the easy thing here is we'll just plug in the wavelength. So 2.10 times 10 raised to the minus 7 meters. And of course, if you look at the units here, our meters will cancel, our seconds will cancel. And as expected, the energy of the photon is in terms of joules, so that makes sense. So let's go ahead and solve for this. So in the numerator, we get 
this answer and I'll go ahead and divide by the wavelength and there we go to three significant figures the energy of the photon is 9.47 times 10 raised to the minus 19 joules the second part of the problem is we want to report this or convert to kilojoules per mole of photons so let's do that here we'll start with our energy for one photon and it's not shown here but when i do the conversion i'll go ahead and report this as joule per photon so technically this is the energy for every one photon and we'll convert to get units of kilojoules over moles so let's do the energy first so kilojoules in the numerator joules in the denominator one kilojoule is a thousand joules then we'll convert the photon unit to mole of photons and cancel the photon put that on top and I'm going to run out of space again. One mole is Avogadro's number, of course, 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23. That's my numerator. I'm ignoring the ones, of course. Multiplying by one and dividing by one is not going to make a difference. And there we go. So two, three sig figs, 5.70 times 10 raised to the two kilojoules per mole. You can go out of scientific notation and convert to standard notation. This is 570 kilojoules per mole. Chlorophyll B, a pigment found in plants, absorbs photons with an energy of 185 kilojoules per mole. Find the wavelength in meters and nanometers of these photons. So here's an exercise where we're given the energy, but we want to convert or find the wavelength of these photons. So what I'll do here is start with my energy equation. E is equal to hc over lambda. It's the energy in terms of the wavelength. H and C, of course, are constants. H is Planck's constant. And C is the speed of light. The energy is given to us as 185 kilojoules per mole. So the first thing I want to do here is rearrange this equation to get the wavelength by itself. When I say rearrange, what that means mathematically is we'll do a little bit of algebra and get the wavelength in the numerator. So I'll multiply both sides by the wavelength and of course divide both sides by the energy. And what you'll see here, of course, are the energy units cancel and the wavelengths cancel on the other side. So I have my equation. Wavelength is equal to HC over the energy. 
you can see that we have a little problem here. Planck's constant is in joules time seconds, but my energy is in kilojoules per mole. So the units don't match up. So we'll have to make a conversion here. I'll go ahead and convert the energy units into joules. So what I'll have to do first is convert the energy units. I'll convert kilojoules to joules and cancel the kilojoules, goes in the denominator. One kilojoule is a thousand joules. So those units cancel. And then what I'll do here is cancel the units of moles. And this is Avogadro's number. And these are photons in one mole. So let me go ahead and solve for this. One eighty five times a thousand. And that's the numerator part. I'll go ahead and get an answer and then divide by Avogadro's number. So my energy looks like to three significant figures, 3.07 times 10 raised to the minus 19 joules. And this is gonna be per photon. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in to find the wavelength. So Planck's constant, times the speed of light, divided by the energy. So before I do anything here, let's check those units. You see the joules cancel, the seconds cancel, and of course I'm left with the units of meters, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So let's get these numbers in here. And there we go. So 6.47 to three significant figures times 10 raised to the minus seven meters. So there's my wavelength in terms of meters. And sometimes it's convenient to report these in terms of nanometers. So pretty simple conversion here. So we'll set up a ratio to convert the meters to nanometers. We'll cancel the units of meters. This ratio, of course, one meter is one times 10 raised to the positive nine nanometers. And this is gonna be 647 nanometers. In our next video, let's review the different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum.